Okay, so let's see how much of the basics you remember from FIN 2601. Remember FIN 2601 set the background in terms of the fundamentals, those basic calculations, knowing how to use ratios, knowing how to do some analysis. So for FIN 3701, you are still going to use ratios. They do come up from time to time, but we take some of them a bit further in terms of calculations, and others are still as basic as they were in 2601. So I want to ask you what some of these ratios are actually telling me in terms of communicating information. Remember, in accounting, we create the statements and then financial managers use the statements. So we're looking at the usage. We're looking at how do we take that information and actually make a decision. Okay. All right, so the first group of ratios is liquidity. We've got two here, current and quick. So can you tell me as much as you can about the current ratio? What does the current ratio tell you? Why is it important? At what points can you come up with now based on the current ratio? Mm. Well, it's if you can afford to pay your debts. Okay, so current is looking at liquidity. So can you afford to pay your debts? Is that short term or long term? I think long term or sh no, short term. Yeah, it's short term because liquidity is looking at things that can be converted into cash. Yes. So how quickly can we realize cash in order to meet certain obligations? So the focus is always on short term. Yes. Current assets over current liabilities will give you a ratio. Do we want that ratio to be bigger or smaller than one? Um, bigger. Greater than one. Greater than one would be good. Why? We'll have more assets than liabilities. So if I have three assets to one liability, what would the answer be? It'll be three, right? Three yes. over one is three. Good or bad? Yes. Good. Good. So in terms of liquidity, we have liquidity to meet our obligations. All our current yes. assets will sufficiently cover our current liabilities. Yes. Great. How is the quick ratio different to the current? It's obviously it's less your inventory. Good. So why do we take out inventory? I can't remember. Can we always sell it? No. No. Okay. Inventory can become obsolete. And because inventory sometimes could be very difficult to sell, we're going to be removing it from the actual ratio, from the current ratio, and that gives us that gives us the quick ratio. Okay. So current assets comprise of what? Give me some current assets, your accounts. Um other current assets. Well, it's all your machinery. Okay, machinery is a non-current asset. Um, your debtors. Debtors is a current asset. What else? Um, your stock. Stock is inventory. Good. What else? Um. The money in your bank. Good. Bank. Great. Okay, so those are three good examples for different current assets. Remember, current assets comprise of resources we control that are used for short-term obligations. So the bank will offer us cash that we can use to pay certain suppliers. Inventory will be sold to generate cash. Okay, that's liquidity. Liquidity is looking at the ability to convert assets into cash in order to run the business. Okay. All right, current liabilities, obviously the denominator again. So if the quick ratio is greater than one, good or bad? Um, if it's greater, then it's good. It's good. So even if I take out all my inventory, so we had an example here of three and one. Let's say our current assets, the total is three, the inventory is one, and the current liabilities are one. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 over 1 is 2. Quick ratio yes, of 2 still... is still positive, greater than 1. So that <laughs> means all our current assets, even if we take out the inventory, can still cover the current liabilities. So is this company going to have problems with liquidity? No. No. Will this company have to seek short-term finance? 
No. No. And that is covered in more detail in that 3702. 3702 looks at short-term finance. 3701, which is this module, is looking at long-term finance. So everything that we, we, we talk about in this module, we'll be looking at from a long-term perspective, making long-term decision-making. Okay. All right, now we've got activity. When you think of the word activity, what are you thinking about? Um, I don't know. Mm. The inflow and outflows. Of what? Well, money. Okay, so sales in terms of customers. So customers buying on credit, customers paying off their debt. Mm. That could be activity. What about us as a business wanting to buy goods from a supplier? That's another activity. So activities relate to the operations. Okay. Okay, so how active is that particular business in terms of realizing cash by either collecting the outstanding debt from their debtors or how effective is the business in terms of having good terms with their suppliers? Is it good to have long credit terms with your supplier? Yes. Why? Because um, then you like, if you have a good relationship with them, it's easier for you to buy more stock without paying straight away. 100%. Okay, so having good credit terms is a way to help finance your business because your supplier is giving you goods today that you can either use to make products or to sell and then at a later stage only have to pay them back. Yes. Great. All right, so the ratios we've got here, inventory turnover and average collection period. Inventory turnover refers to how quickly you sell stock. So cost of sales over inventory. It depends on what sort of industry you're in. If you're in an industry where you have fast moving consumer goods, FMCG, those goods are going to be selling quickly compared to other markets where the goods don't sell as quickly. So um, let's talk about maybe uh, equipment, large, large items of equipment or um, cars or vehicles. Those industries will have a slightly um, shorter, not shorter, a slightly slower turnover ratio compared to industries like retail okay where retail selling hundreds and thousands of different goods every day yes what does the average collection period tell us how quick they get their money correct good so here we're looking at the collection we're looking at receiving cash back from our debtors is this long term or short term um, I think short term. Correct, short term. Okay, because debtors would be day to day running of the business. Right, so the average okay. collection period focuses on your debtors and your sales and looking at how quickly you actually re receive the actual payments. Then we've got the creditors here, average payment period. That's focusing on payments to our suppliers, people who we owe money for having bought certain goods from them, where there's a relationship where they're supplying your business with products or services and you're then going to be making payment at a later stage the average payment period is looking at on average how soon okay or how late does it take on average to make that payment do we want that period to be longer or shorter um shorter longer okay you would want to try extend your average payment period as long as possible without incurring additional fees and charges but from the business perspective you want them to pay quicker but that's collections that's debtors okay so debtors do you want an average collection period that's longer or shorter uh, the debt is shorter and the credit is longer. Yes, okay, so the average collection period you want as a business to be shorter rather than longer because that means you're collecting sooner rather than later. Okay. When looking at the payment, you want to pay as late as possible without occurring additional charges. Okay. And then you've got total asset turnover. Where have we seen total asset turnover before? Oof. 
Oh, I can't remember that name. Um, Starts with a D. Oh, DuPont. Yes. Okay, so the DuPont model broke up return on equity into three separate components. Net profit margin, total asset turnover, and financial leverage multiplier. Okay, we're going to take DuPont further now because we have that basis and we can now expand in terms of more decision making. So we can look at what actually, it, um, what, what actually causes the return on equity in terms of the attributes. So, so is it the sales markup or the margin on our profit okay, in terms of the markup that we have on the product that generates a profit? Or are we going to be looking at the total asset turnover? So how much sales do I have compared to the assets that I have? Okay, versus the leverage, which is how much debt do I have in the business that helps generate or maximize returns? Mm -hmm. okay, so with the total asset turnover, do you want the ratio to be higher or lower? Um, higher. Yes, the higher the ratio, the better. So let's say I've got a business, business A has one sale to one asset, what would their turnover ratio be? One. Correct. What happens if I have business B, which has two sales to every one asset? What would business B's um, turnover be? Two. Two. Which is better? Two, B. Correct. Why? Well, if you look at the actual ratio, do you agree both A and B have the same amount of assets? Do you agree? Yes. But who's doing more with the assets that they've got? B. Correct. B is generating double the amount of sales for every asset they have. So which is going to be a more successful business to run? B. Correct. Okay. B would definitely be a better decision in terms of an investment perhaps or financing future projects in that particular organization because B shows more promise by being more productive with its assets. Remember, assets generate capacity. Without capacity, businesses can't operate. Yes. Now we're changing focus. We're looking at debt. What does debt represent? Money we still owe. Correct. Okay. Debt is a way of financing projects. So it's a way to get leverage. Okay. One of your last chapters in this module looks at leverage. Okay. Leverage is doing more with less. Okay. So you've got a certain amount of assets. If we can really use those assets to our full potential, we're going to generate more and more return. Okay, and um, it's exactly the same as what we just looked at here in terms of total asset turnover, sales compared to assets. Here we're looking at leverage in terms of liabilities and assets. Okay, so how much of our liabilities are actually financing assets? Are most of our assets financed through debt or are most of our assets financed through equity? Does that make a difference? Yes. The reason why it makes a difference is because of risk. And risk is a concept you've covered before, yes? Yes. Okay, so tell me what the definition of risk is. Uncertainty. Good. Okay, risk is uncertainty. No one knows what's going to happen in the future. But we need to plan for the worst and expect the best because that's the best way of approaching risk. Managing what we can manage and then trying to maximize returns as much as possible. So when looking at the debt ratio, the debt ratio is going to give us what information about the business? Well, we've got liabilities over assets. So mm -hmm. do I want this ratio to be very high or very low? Low. Well, it depends on what type of investor you are or what type of business you're running. If I'm a high risk type of um, business owner, okay, would I want this ratio to be high or low? Um... No. High. I would want it to be high. So a high debt ratio would represent high risk. Okay. A low debt ratio would represent low risk. Okay. And the reason for that is this big word over there, leverage. Okay. And without leverage, you don't have any risk. Think about it. If you could buy your house cash, would you? Yes. Why would you? Because then you don't have to pay off interest. Correct. You don't have to pay 20 years of interest. If you can buy a house cash, that's great. But at the same time, 
buying a house cash may also be a bad scenario depending on your cash flow because now you're investing all that capital now and mm. it's not generating any return. Okay, if that's the house that you're living in, that's not going to generate any return. But if you're purchasing property to rent out, well, then that's a different story. Okay. Okay, so risk is either dependent on the number of debt that you have, okay, or risk can be from external factors. For example, no one knows what's going to happen in the economy, right? Mm. Okay. Um, if interest rates continue to rise, if there's more, um, let's say, unemployment in the market, um, those are all factors that create political and economic risk that we can't mm. control as a business. Can businesses control their debt? Mm, yeah, they should be able to. Yes, they can. Okay, businesses decide how much debt to include in the in the, in the actual organization or not. Okay, companies decide on their capital structure. Okay, that's an important word that we're going to expand on in a later module, capital structure. How do we structure our capital? How much debt should a company hold? How much equity should a company hold? Is that right? Mm. Yes. Great. And then you've got times interest earned. Okay, EBIT is earnings before interest and tax over the interest. The bigger this ratio is, the better because I'm covering more of my interest payments. Remember, interest is a financing cost for who? For the person. For, well, the business, yeah. We're looking at companies. Yeah. So, yeah, interest would be paid by companies and that would be seen as an expense. Okay, which okay. is an outflow of cash. Right, a few okay. problems with ratios. You've seen this before in 2601. Gross profit margin, operating profit margin, and net profit margin. All have a different numerator, but they all have a common denominator. Sales, sales, and sales. Uh, when looking yeah. at net profit, how do you get net profit? Profit for the year minus preference share dividend. How do we get the net profit? The net profit is the profit for the year. Um, I can't remember. Okay, so we start with EBIT, earnings before interest and tax. So oh, yeah, I was struggling with this last year. Okay, what do we take off EBIT? Interest first or tax first? I think... Um... Interest or tax? Interest. Interest. Why? I don't know. I'm guessing. Interest is tax deductible. Okay. Then I okay. get EBT. Okay. Earnings before yeah. tax. Now what do I take off? Tax. Correct. Then I take off tax and that gives me the net profit or the profit for the year. Okay, so that's a basic okay. account that you need to remember because, yes, this was covered in 2601, but it still comes up again now because you still need to do the calculation to get certain figures to use in the calculation. Okay. Then we've got more profitability ratios here, but these are looking more at the actual ratios when we look at the financial statements. So I'm going to be taking out certain figures to calculate EPS. EPS is earnings per share, ROA, Return on assets, ROE, return on equity. Okay, here we've got the same numerators, but different denominators. We've either got shares, we've got assets, or we've got equity. Okay. So market ratios, price to earnings is market book, and book value. All of these represent market ratios, meaning we're taking something external and we're comparing it to something internal. So the market price, is that external or internal? Um, external. That's external. That's what companies are, are going to be sold at in the market in terms of a willing buyer and a willing seller. Willing buyers and sellers will agree on a price for a particular asset. So the mm -hmm. market price represents that price. And the market to book, the book value is that internal or external? That will be internal. Correct. Okay, why? Because we look at equity and we look at the number of shares in the business. Okay, so do you agree from a financial management point of view, a company could have a market price that's very different to its book value? Mm, 
Yes. Correct. Okay, because perceptions in the market are different to reality. So people might be willing to pay more for a particular company, but the company is not worth the same amount on paper because that's the book value. Book value is looking at internal, market prices look at external, people's consensus and their sentiment towards a particular organization. Okay. Right, then finally, some revision here in terms of DuPont. DuPont represents a system of analysis and that's looking at ROE in more detail. Okay, we spoke about this a bit earlier when I talked about a total asset turnover ratio. If I take those two ratios, net profit margin and total asset turnover, and I group the two together, I get this, return on total assets. And the reason for that is, if I cancel the sales with the sales, what am I left with? Uh, profit for the year minus pref share diff over total assets. total assets. And that's the same as which ratio? Total asset turnover. No oh, return assets. Uh, okay. Okay, have a look. There's profit for the year over preference share dividend over total assets. It's the same as what we've got here. Profit for the year minus preference share div over total assets. Do you agree? Okay. Okay. Um. Financial leverage is looking at what? We spoke about the word leverage. Yeah, that's the... Uh, um, oh, what was it now? Tammy? Yes, I'm thinking of what I'm trying to say now. It's the... Uh, The ability to to pay off your debts. Okay, debt is the key. The ability to pay off your debts, that'll be more liquidity, okay, or solvency. Okay, leverage is just focusing on the debt element. How much debt versus equity do you have in the business? Okay. Okay, so if I have more leverage, is there more risk or less risk? Um... More risk. Correct. Okay, so DuPont analyzes ROE in three separate components, net profit margin, total asset turnover, and financial leverage. Happy? Okay. And that's all the revision that you need from your FIN 2601 in terms of the ratios. Okay, there are some other things that we'll revise as we go in terms of certain calculations. So, for example, working out net present value. Do you remember how to work on NPV? Can you still do it on your calculator? Um, I think so. Okay, well, we'll revise that when we get to it, but those are all other skills that you've picked up from 2601 that you still need for 3701. Okay, things like calculations. Right, I've okay. tried to show the layout and format of this particular module in terms of three categories. So long-term decisions, okay, in terms of investment, long-term financial decisions, and then other considerations. Okay, so all of these bullet points represent different chapters that we'll be looking at over the course. The first chapter, which is today's focus, is capital budgeting and cash flow principles. We're looking at the actual budgeting in terms of how do I allocate funds to certain projects? Okay, what do I need to be mindful of when determining what the cash flows are going to be for that particular project or investment that I'm going to be accepting or rejecting. Okay. Then later we'll look at techniques, we'll look at risk and refinements, we'll take the model a bit further, and we'll work out cost of capital, and we'll do some analysis in terms of WAC, WMCC, and IOS, and we'll also look at leverage again. We spoke about leverage earlier, it's, it's debt, it's risk, and then capital structure. There's the one that I spoke about in terms of how much debt do I have, how much equity do I have. That's a decision that the company is going to make. Still okay? Yes. All right. And then the last few chapters are very short. Um, UNISA has taken one or two pages from each of the different chapters in the textbook and they've created um, some, um, oh, uh, what's the word, notes, okay, in the study guide where they cover dividend policy, leasing, and M&As, okay, mergers and acquisitions.